The U.S. boasts of the best military in the world, so you might be surprised to hear that the incentive and benefit structure virtually guarantee that the best people don't stay in their jobs very long. At least that's the conclusion of Tim Kaine, a former U.S. Air Force captain and economist with the Hoover Institution, who's written a new book called Total Volunteer Force. The biggest perverse incentive, I think, is that the pay structure is based almost entirely on seniority. So you could be a captain in the Army, and I might be a captain in the Army that's four years senior to you. You have a more important job than I do, but you're paid less because I'm senior. That doesn't make sense anymore. We, we can pay people based on the skills they have and, and the role that they're fulfilling. The biggest perverse incentive, though, is they've got a retirement system that even if you serve 19 years in the military, you would get no retirement. And you hit that 20-year gate, though, and you get half pay for the rest of your life. Well, that creates a bubble of people from about year 12 to year 20, and then you see about 50% drop-off in every branch where the individuals, officers and enlisted, get out. The system the way it is, would you say, obviously makes people want to stay in 20 years to get the retirement, but then leave quickly? Yes. So the good talent isn't necessarily sticking around? We're talking about enlisted uh, soldiers and sailors who are 38 years old and qualify for lifetime retirement. Now, 38 years old, even in the military today, you're in the prime of your life. You understand things really fully in an organization more deeply. And I, so I think we're losing people at peak productivity. And a bigger challenge is we're not letting individuals specialize. It's up or out, up or out, up or out. So you're constantly forced to go up in rank, even if you might be the best fighter pilot or you might be the best cyber warrior. No, time for a middle management desk job. That just is bad management. You've also said neutered command authority over personnel decisions makes it difficult to match the right people with the right jobs, hurts readiness, and prevents toxic and predatory individuals from being weeded out. Yes. You might be captain of a U.S. Navy destroyer, and there are 200 to 300 people that work for you on that ship. How many do you select or hire or screen? The answer is zero. I'm recommending in this book not to create an old boys club, but at least give some discretion to commanders. Send them three names and let them do an interview and a background check. Why this is important? The odds of a woman in uniform being sexually assaulted are 10 times higher than the odds of a woman on a college campus. And that's because the military is not weeding out the bad apples. And I think that's because it's a centralized bureaucracy. Who has to be the ones to change that? Because Defense Secretary Gates and Carter have tried to do some of that, but it hasn't worked. You know, there's one individual, Donald Trump could establish another presidential commission, and we've already got a name for it. Just like the Gates Commission back in the late 60s, we could have another Gates Commission and ask the former Secretary of Defense to just focus for a year or two on this issue, come up with some reforms that Congress would vote yay or nay, and this is an easy fix. In the past, when we've had commissions, a lot of times Congress doesn't take the recommendations of the commissions. You know what's, what's really beautiful about military personnel reform is it's not partisan. You, you won't find Democrats or Democratic staffers, because I've met with them, they're not opposed to the Republicans on the same committee. It's really bureaucratic inertia. But for, for those of us who aren't in the military, how does this impact our national readiness and our national security? I'd like to see us win all of our wars. I had a commander, uh, one of our commanders in Afghanistan, had said to me, do you realize we've been in Afghanistan for over 10 years and we've had over 10 commanders of all of our forces there? Can you imagine in World War II saying, Ike, you did really well in 1942, but it's somebody else's turn, and rotating, giving everybody a turn, up or out, up or out, move the system. It just doesn't make sense. Let people specialize at their best and finish the job. On the positive side, Kane says the corporate world can learn a few things from how the military works. Top of that list, learning from the military leadership culture and its commitment to a shared purpose.